Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 526. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Hasbro Toys, Marvel Legends series, Avengers line, Ghost Rider and Flame Cycle boxed set. Johnny Blaze fires up his iconic motorcycle and hits the pavement as the streetwise hothead Ghost Rider. With Marvel Legends series 6-inch scale figures and vehicles, collectors can start a legendary collection of comic and movie-based Marvel characters. With this 6-inch scale Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider figure and Flame Cycle vehicle, featuring classic design and premium articulation, Marvel fans can imagine recreating the arcs from some of their favorite Marvel characters. With the Marvel Legends series, Heroes and villains aren't just super, they're legendary. This Marvel Legends box set includes the comic-inspired 6-inch scale flame cycle vehicle plus added FX flame accessories and a front cycle shield. A highly articulated 112 scale Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider action figure with a detailed design, hand-painted deco, and chain with flame effects. Flame Cycle accessories are removable, released in 2017 by Hasbro Toys. Now, the comic of the day is Ghost Rider, Volume 2, Issue Number 71, with a cover date of August 1982, with story by J.M. DeMatisse, art by Don Perlin, and cover by Bob Budiansky. This issue is titled, The Tears of Adam Henderson. The story opens in a two-story Illinois home. Adam and Maureen Henderson are having an argument. Adam, sick of his worthless life, has decided to quit his job as a music teacher. Ignoring his wife's reasoning that they can't afford him to quit, upset, Adam walks out of the house, leaving Maureen in tears. Later, he finds himself on the outskirts of town at a large gorge. Still fuming at what he's allowed his life to become, he doesn't notice the large shadow looming over him until it's too late. He turns around, and all he can manage to think is, Oh my good lord. Elsewhere in the town, the Quentin Carnival is in full swing and all eyes are glued on the motorcycle stunt show performed by Red Fowler and Johnny Blaze. After the show, Johnny and Red are out on the carnival grounds, talking about how the innocence of small towns is all in people's heads, and that the same demons in our souls are always waiting to spring out. Their discussion is interrupted by Cynthia Randolph, who sarcastically states that she didn't know a macho cycle jock could think so deeply. In return, Johnny says that all he likes to do is dress up in leather and ride a big chopper in order to prove his manhood. While Cynthia stands aghast, Johnny excuses himself and his partner by saying they're going somewhere to lift weights and compare the size of their muscles. Meanwhile, Adam Henderson walks through a neighborhood a strange blue flame crackles around his body. Coming to a house that's hosting a loud party, he decides he doesn't like seeing other people happy. Pointing his hand and yelling out, the house suddenly goes black and quiet. Adam moves on and is interrupted by a barking dog that's fenced into a yard. Adam's power flares again, and the dog simply falls to the ground dead. He continues walking, eventually coming to the carnival. Moving through the crowds, he bumps into Johnny and Red, nearly knocking them over. Red wants to go say something to him, but the cyclists are distracted by two young women seeking autographs. Moving on, Adam moves to the tent of Madame Olga, the carnival's psychic. Entering the tent, he chooses a psychic reading from her crystal ball. Olga is a fraud, pretending to be a psychic. 
but she is shocked to see images actually begin to form in her fake crystal ball upon touching Adam's hand. Adam speaks, telling of a race of beings called the Seraph, who had evolved into a state of grace, angelic beings that had a goal to find a reason for being, the ultimate truth. Unfortunately, they never found what they were looking for, and this drove them insane. As one, their entire race hurled themselves into an ocean of fire, committing racial suicide. From their death, however, the collective conscious of the Seraph demanded revenge, and centuries later, Null, the living darkness, arose from the depths. Null came to the world, seeking to destroy all life, but the creature was defeated by the defenders. Realizing that he had much to learn about the world, Null wandered the earth, searching for the one bitter human heart that which he could merge with. He found that heart in Adam Henderson, who at the end of his tale had broken down in black tears. Raising his hand to Olga, he tells her that Null now has a living weapon to destroy all life not understanding why people won't see what he sees. On the carnival grounds, Johnny and Red are playing games with the two girls they met. Suddenly, an explosion rocks the area from Olga's tent, causing the two bikers to race to her aid. Finding Olga alive, though in a deep state of shock, the carnival workers are confused as to what happened. Suddenly, Adam appears floating in the air, the shadow of Null coalesced around him. Pointing into the crowd, Adam focuses on an elderly man, a pastor named Oliver Matheson, and lifts him into the air with his power. Calling him a deceiver and a fraud, Adam flies the two of them away, accusing Matheson of promising a non-existent heaven to creatures already in hell. Realizing that the monster needs to be stopped, Jenny runs off. When safely away from his friends, he calls forth his demonic second self, the Ghost Rider, who creates a hellfire cycle and rides off into the direction of Adam. Back at the Henderson home, Marine wakes up to find Adam standing in their bedroom. He tells her that he's brought a gift, revealing the pastor, shrunken down to the size of a doll. Marine screams, which Adam interprets to her not liking the gift. So he throws the tiny man out the second story window. The pastor, growing to his normal size as he falls, loses consciousness when he hits the ground. The ghost rider sees this and ramps his bike off a car, crashing into the Henderson's bedroom. Adam fires a blast of energy into the demon's chest which the rider angrily answers with a blast of hellfire. Both combatants still standing after their attacks, Null tackles the rider and carries them both outside. Marine runs outside, but is stopped by the awakened Pastor Matheson, who tells her that they have no power against creatures such as these. Adam and the Ghost Rider battle furiously with Adam attempting to shrink the demon down. Immediately, the rider regrows by the force of his will alone. Blasting him with hellfire, Adam screams, regaining control of his own body for a moment. Null returns, however, causing Adam to telekinetically lift a car and throw it. The rider dodges, chasing the man, monster, into the town square followed by Maureen and Matheson. In a last desperate move, Adam blasts a large stone statue and topples it over. The Ghost Rider easily jumps out of the way, but Maureen, who has run forward to stop Adam, finds herself directly beneath it. Seeing what he's done, Adam regains control of his body, though still finds himself unable to act. At the last moment, Pastor Matheson leaps forward, pushing Marine and himself out of the way of the large statue. Taking advantage of his weakness, the Ghost Rider blasts Adam with his hellfire, 
using the man's soul to drive Null out of his body. When Null exits into his true form, the Ghost Rider continues blasting with his Hellfire, eventually destroying the creature. Afterwards, Marine races to Adam's side, comforting him after what he's went through. Similarly, Pastor Matheson is comforted by his wife, who expresses her love for her husband. Meanwhile, however, the Ghost Rider relinquishes control back to Blaze, who has no such person to comfort him in his time of need. This story is continued in Ghost Rider, issue number 72. Geek Fact Null is a demonic entity created from the collective negative impulses of a seemingly impossible benign and now extinct angelic race called the Seraph, who once lived on Earth's moon. After achieving full consciousness, it dominated the town of Christianboro, Virginia, until driven off by the Gargoyle. It subsequently possessed the body of Adam Henderson, using him as a pawn, but was defeated again, this time by the Ghost Rider. Bonus Geek Fact The Seraph were a race of winged humanoids who hourly resembled pale-skinned humans, except for the large yellow feathered wings that extended from their upper backs. Millennia ago, the Seraph lived on the surface of Earth's moon. They were pure-souled and open-hearted race who lived an idyllic existence. But despite this, as a people, they were unsatisfied because they desperately wanted to know the reason why they existed. Eventually, this existential need drove them to leave the moon and fly to the furthest reaches of the universe in search of the truth. Sadly, when none of them ever found it, they all experienced such great despair that they felt compelled to return home and commit racial suicide. All of the half a million Seraph accomplished this by flying down into the ocean of fire that then roared across the lunar surface. However, the Seraph race had possessed a collective unconsciousness that survived the deaths of their physical bodies and continued to be tormented by their failure in finding a reason for being. This unconsciousness felt a desire for revenge against all creation for denying the Seraph's quest for meaning. Eventually, after experiencing centuries of torment, this hatred birthed a demonic being that called itself Null, the Living Darkness, a monstrous entity who considered itself to be the enemy of all life and believed that only the dead belonged in a universe without purpose. Advertising Ad Fact Yo, Joe! Join the best! Join the G.I. Joe Mobile Strike Force team. You can enlist in the G.I. Joe Mobile Strike Force and become a team member. You will receive an exciting membership kit with products and benefits that are not available anywhere else. Here's what you'll get when you join for one year. A G.I. Joe dog tag, metal dog tag, personalized with your name and address on a 24-inch stainless steel chain, a G.I. Joe military web belt, adjustable olive drab color, official G.I. Joe team and gray brass buckle, a plastic G.I. Joe membership card with rules on the back, a G.I. Joe wall poster, 17 by 22 inch full color poster of a G.I. Joe mobile strike force team. A G.I. Joe iron-on emblem for t-shirts, sweatshirts, and jackets. Plus an introductory newsletter and an annual G.I. Joe Mobile Strike Force newsletter with news about the G.I. Joe team and special offers. Just fill out this official G.I. Joe Mobile Strike Force application form. Order yours today. And... And final geek fact, months later, 
After the defeat by Ghost Rider on the moon orbiting Earth 712, Null's plan to cause universal Armageddon was opposed by the Defenders and a telepathic group consciousness from Earth 616 who had teamed up with the native Squadron Supreme. However, Null proved to be too powerful and was on the verge of its ultimate triumph when the psychic gestalt that had secretly entered Null's soul was able to find the buried innocence of the long-dead Seraph. Beings who had possessed such purity that could not be totally extinguished even by the racial madness that had created Null. Once the psychics released that purity within Null, it sparked a conflict of internal forces that Null found unbearable. Unable to face its own light, Null simply ceased to be. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for a slightly longer daily comic and collectible, and I hope to see you again Friday. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out. Out.